I know this guy. Leading people into battle and not bringing them home. It's hard. No kidding. But for what it's worth, you might not have gotten through, Rain. But I mean, Livewire, she's... She was as bad as they come. And you got through to her. You, you, you gave her something to fight for, to, to sacrifice for. You changed her heart for the better. That's, I mean, that's amazing. You did that without the yellow sun. That was all you. Wow, your advice actually makes sense now. I think I'd actually follow it. <laughs> There's a logical progression. That sounds it comes like... to a point at the end. <laughs> 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 and you know, speaking of glass half uh, full stuff, that Kryptonian priestess gave you some information about the world killers. That's not for nothing. Yeah, yeah, she did. She called them purity and pestilence. So now all we have to do is find them before rain does. Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 3, Episode 11, and today we're going to be doing my review, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any Supergirl videos later this year. So overall, this episode was a very, very good episode. I really enjoyed it. It hit some really strong emotional beats, and the storyline was actually really, really intriguing, and throughout the episode, I was indulged in what was happening. So overall, a very good episode, so we're going to be breaking down the scenes and the most important things that I could spot out in the episode. So obviously I'm not doing this in chronological order but Kara and Monel, their end talking scene, I thought that was one of the best scenes in the whole episode considering how emotional it was with the music and Monel was actually giving a really really strong inspirational speech lifting up Kara's spirit and I feel like their connection even though it's not a relationship connection at the moment it really really works and you can tell that they're going to be great working together in the field and we know next episode they will be fighting together in the field properly for the first time and Monel knows about leading people into battle and losing them so he's referencing legion members that have died and so Kara in this scene talks about her mind and her mistakes and maybe she could have fully got through to Rain and basically Monel just wraps it up and says you did what you did there is always consequences but what you did was good because you got information that there are more world killers that there are three world killers there's Rain purity and pestilence i'm pretty sure they said something like that but correct me if i said that wrong so the ending scene we get to see that purity is born if you didn't know that is purity who the kryptonian priestess was actually referring to so she's called julia that's her earth name and she doesn't realize that she's a world killer until the end of the episode where we get to see her actually go full on purity. So she's going to be really awesome to see. We're going to see her, not next episode, maybe a glimpse of her, but the episode after is going to be the main fight scene for her. So I'm looking forward to these new world killers, but to be fair, I want it to be solely about Rain. So hopefully these world killers are in a few episodes and then hopefully they get taken out and hopefully it's more to do with Rain. Considering that I'm really invested with her storyline and I don't want her to take a backseat for these other people. But in the episode we got Livewire, Sai, Satin Girl and Supergirl teaming up. It was an awesome team up. There wasn't too many big fight scenes but the fight scenes that were in the episode really paid off. So Live Wire actually in the end dies at the hands of Rain and her heat vision. So this was really, really emotional considering that she's technically redeemed herself. She was the hero in the end. I wouldn't consider her a villain or like an anti-hero. So I think it was a great way for her to actually go out. Although I'm sad that we won't be seeing her more because I actually really enjoy Live Wire. It was a good send off for her character. So Sai, by the end of the episode, we got sort of a redemption arc. Although she's not totally redeemed, she seems to be on the right path so I enjoyed her in this episode but the Kryptonian priestess was named Jinder Kal Roz and it's revealed that Fort Roz was actually named after her because she was one of the first prisoners and she's known as the Dark Priestess and in the past she's worked with Rain's Makers and 
she knew everything about rain purity and the other world killers. So it's revealed also that Fort Raz is orbiting around a blue star which emits radiation that will kill any life form with a Y chromosome. So that's men. Although the team up between the girls was awesome, I just felt like they could have come up with a better explanation as I felt like that was kind of a bit cheap of what they did and a bit of a shit explanation considering why Monel and everyone else wouldn't come. And I felt like that was a last minute thing that they might have added in, that this blue star kills anything with a Y chromosome. I just think that's a bit weird how specific that was. Tell me what you thought of that in the comments below. So Brainiac 5 and Wynn had a short side story in this episode and I actually really enjoyed it. It was very comedic and it was very funny seeing Wynn actually in the end using technology that Brainiac 5 thinks is really inferior to actually save the day. So another error that I have with the episode and I've had with previous episodes is the time pacing errors. And that is to do with how ridiculously quick they got to the blue star. So apparently these spaceships are like Star Wars spaceship. They can travel to light speed practically. That's how fast they're going. Obviously not as fast as light speed in Star Wars. But they seem to be getting propelled there really, really quick. And I just have a problem with that because it doesn't seem very realistic at all. Considering how long it actually takes a Kryptonian in a Kryptonian pod to get from Krypton to Earth, it just really, really doesn't make sense. But the Alex and Ruby scenes were actually brilliant. One of the best things about this episode, I thoroughly enjoyed all of them and I really do get that connection. So everyone's been theorizing that Alex is going to be adopting Ruby and I'm down for that because I really like the actress for Ruby. She's probably one of the best young actresses, along with Isabella Vidovic and Olivia Nakanan. I think the children who have actually portrayed children in Supergirl have been especially good. Not so good with Cat Grant's son and some other people in the past, but these ones in season three have been excellent. So I really do want Alex to adopt Ruby, but I do want Samantha to stay around. I love her. So once in Fort Ruz, it's revealed that the prisoner that they're looking for is past some sort of fog, and the fog has some sort of similar ghouls, which actually really worked in this scene. I actually kind of got shook the first time they showed up and they were similar to how Rain's makers actually appeared so maybe they come along as a package deal with the makers considering the Kryptonian priestess has a strong connection to Rain and their mission so I was just happy to see them and they were in the end propelled into the blue star whilst fighting Livewire so Kara meets the Kryptonian priestess as Jinder Cal Roz and it was a great performance by Sarah Douglas she played Ursa in the original Superman movies, but inside of me I knew that when Rain showed up she was going to kill the priestess considering she was way too happy to get to Earth and it seemed like this was just a way of them actually removing any information of how to defeat Rain or the other world killers. So Rain is really whittling herself down and I'm curious to see if Rain will fight the world killers because I think that will be a very interesting storyline. But Rain's powers aren't dependent on the sun this is revealed so that's interesting how she's actually genetically modified, you know, she's not a normal Kryptonian. So Livewire versus Rain, like I said earlier, a great fight scene. I thought Britt Morgan was a standout in this episode. I thought she did one of the best performances we've seen her do as Livewire. And finally, Psy vs Rain, we see Rain's greatest fear is actually losing Ruby. We actually get a glimpse at Samantha for a bit and she says, where am I? And she sees Supergirl and then she clicks back into her Rain persona. So I found that really interesting how she could actually change like that. And Samantha for the first time was able to see that she was in the Rain suit and she was being called Rain. So it wasn't answered later in the episode, but Samantha asks Alex to help her because she realizes she's losing time. She doesn't remember that, but we could see that Samantha was there and Rain was gone for a minute. But anyway, guys, Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Overall, this episode was really awesome. I'm looking forward to next episode. I will have my trailer breakdown out later today. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later.